Thank you, Heavenly Father, for a simply wonderful life, for all the love in it, from Mum and all the people since, the wives and the friends, good acquaintances, lovely meetings, amazing insights, study and thoughts of you, beautiful experiences in the countryside, by the sea, by the rivers, by the lakes. Love you, Lord. Thank you for simply wonderful life. Of course, I don't want to come back because I have the view that being with you and all heaven is even more wonderful. And I look to that, Lord, for the love of you and all. Just love you, Father. Love you, Dad. Thank you, Dad. Oh, but have you been genuine, Marshall? I mean, there were difficulties. I mean, you said yourself, uh, bad fostering to begin with, and uh, um, TB, goodness. Uh, Mum and Dad at war. Uh, difficulty of coping when you first left home. And sadness of not being able to look after Mum properly. Guilt, even, possibly. Not quite, but close. <laughs> Loneliness before you had a girlfriend, Linda, who rescued you. Yeah, I know. And I can add some more. There's three divorces and financial ruin. <laughs> especially by some churchy people. Some fears. Yeah, true. Well, that's why I don't want to come back. But was life wonderful? Oh, yes. Goodness, Lord, you know it was. Love you to bits for it. And it's been enchanting following after you, Lord. Writing and recording are oh, tremendous lift for me. Lovely to feel you in a sense speaking to me. Putting thoughts into my head. Love you, Lord. Oh, the, the, the joy of um, worship too, Lord. Singing. Loved singing. Singing to you. Amazing accommodation you found me from time to time to time to time. Jobs. Jobs at the right time, the right sort of jobs. Gave me loads of time to love you and seek you. Study success. To have overcome being a really mediocre school student. The fun of acting, Lord, early on. The fun of speaking, public speaking. The joy of teaching, lecturing. Even research. Friends. Lovely food. Lovely food. Day after day, year after year. Comforts. Un uncountable, un unnumberable, whatever you like to call it. Lovely cars. Just super cars. 
Never had a brand new one. Didn't need to, Lord. I think the newest I had was three years old, the first um, 1100. Our pets, Lord. Lovely pets, especially cats and dogs. Just lovely. Thank you, Lord. Walks, Father, incredibly long walks, incredibly thoughtful walks, philosophical, your thoughts embracing me. Country lanes, prosperity, Lord, even now, I mean, State pension is my income, but I have everything, everything I need. Just lovely, Lord. But of all, Lord, coming to know you better, coming to know you at all, of course, in the beginning, Joy of knowing you, Dad. The incredible joy of having you here with me and in me and all the enlightenment you've given me, Dad. Just love you, love you, love you. Thank you, Dad. Thank you, Dad, for a lovely life. And for all those things, Lord, that I've not even been conscious of or can remember. And you've put them there because they were needed. So love you, Dad. So love you, Heavenly Dad. Thank you, Dad. Well, I've re I've recorded this in response to reading the last page of um, uh, Kriyananda's The New Path. On my copy, it's page 529. And there's a poem there written by... Oh, no, it's a translation. He says, let me end this book by writing out, first in Bengali, and then in English, a devotional song. Thoughts from it found expression in two of my girls' favourite chants. Well, I'll read it to you. So you'll understand why I've written, why I've recorded what I have. So, top of page now, 529. My desires have not yet been fulfilled. Ah. Oh. My hopes not yet realised. O oh, Mother, he means Divine Mother, of course, yeah, he's got a capital M. My earthly dreams have all fled away. Once more I call out from the pain of my heart, Mother, take me on your lap. O oh, Mother, my earthly dreams have all fled away. In this world, Mother, who is there that truly loves? In this world, they do not know how to love. There, where true love is, there alone would my heart dwell forever. O oh, mother, my earthly dreams have all fled away. Long, long have I called you, dearest one. How much longer can I keep on calling? For love of you my heart is breaking. O oh, mother, my earthly dreams have all fled away. Yet my hopes, alas, have not yet been fulfilled. And then, Queen um, Andrew ends it by saying, And so ends my story. 
her sister, and I think you pronounce this as Guyana Marta, would often say, now this lady he's referring to is I think one of the, in, in, in Paramahansa's view, the most advanced of his female students. And she would often say apparently, God alone, God alone. Well, yes, right, okay. Um, Paramhansa identifies with um, God as Divine Mother. And so he finishes with a quote of um, the most advanced female disciple that he's, he's drawing attention to. But such an incredibly sad poem. And I thought, Oh my goodness. First of all, I thought, Kriyananda, um, he was disappointed with life. Oh. And then I realized, but hang on, it's his guru's favorite chants. Oh. The guru felt this way too. My goodness, be careful of following these two. Do you want to go the same way? Do you want to get to the end of life feeling disappointed? So I, I immediately, well, hang on, let me think, how would I finish, how do I want to finish recordings? I'm not finishing recordings here, but just, you know, I'm just thinking it through. Well, of course, I focused on what serves good and lovely, think on these things, and gratitude even for things that don't look so good, because, well, I've got good reason to trust him for them, haven't I? So I'm going to thank him. Life is wonderful. It's brought me to know you better, Lord. What could be more wonderful than that? This is life eternal, to know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ in our sin. So even if I didn't realize it, life is wonderful. Look what it's doing. And you would have thought, how much more for these two? Well, perhaps not for Paramahansa, if you think he's a avatar already. I mean, it was just a no gain for him being here, but I don't think that's the case, is it? I mean, surely he got tremendous joy out of knowing he was doing uh, guru stroke God's will, or and all the people that loved him. In this world, they do not know how to love. Are you mad? These disciples were devoted to you. I mean, they shouldn't have been. They should have been devoted to God. But <laughs> from Marshall's point of view, anyway. Not from your point of view, of course. But, but you know, they do not know how to love. Goodness, they knew how to love you. Kriyananda, for instance. And all of them, I mean, they had their problems. Of course, the children. I'm absolutely floored by this last page. I'm going to pause. I'm going to listen to my, <laughs> my response again, the beginning of this, this recording. Hang on a minute. No, I should say, shouldn't I? I think a flaw, basic fault of these two great books. You know, I mean, incredibly dedicated people, these two people. But the great mistake, it's this Eastern concept of worshipping a guru. 
a teacher. It's not just an Eastern mistake. Almost the whole of the Christian church has done the same thing. It worshipped the messenger, the teacher, Jesus. Decided to call him God, incarnation of God. That's avatar in Eastern jargon, if you like. And then worshipped him as God. Despite his teaching. I shall love the Lord thy God. With all thy heart, soul, mind and strength. This is life eternal to know thee, the only true God. Our Heavenly Father. Not me. The classic mistake of all religions, is it so? That you end up worshipping the messenger teacher, the guru, typically the man, but sometimes the woman, instead of God. Don't make that mistake. Don't get caught up in organizations and whatsoever is good and lovely. Think on these things. And let your gratitude swell up within you and your praise and thanks to God for everything just pour forth and you'll have life, life in abundance because you become devoted to God, our God, the God of all, your Heavenly Father and mine, our Heavenly Father. Love you, Dad. Thank you, Dad. Oh, major omissions I've thought of. All the times I've been healed. I mean, obviously from TB and um, all those childhood illnesses, so many of them. One of them I could well have gone deaf, but for intervention of mum and... Uh, a doctor she was um, good friends with. All the incredible synchronicities in life, provisions, whether it was transport or money or people or just the right event at the right moment. Wow, complete change of country, of course, from England to New Zealand. Incredible provisions when we came here. And to get here too. Miracle after miracle. And that was the other thing. Recovery in particular from my back and getting through difficulties with the back. From something like, if I was guessing, 36 years of age. Could be earlier. Yeah, I think it was. Oh yes. I mean, really severe at times. Such, you know, I mean, it was such a worry. And now I get by almost without trouble. I mean, I'm careful. Um, I don't lift casually. <laughs> yes, thank you for your provision, Dad. Accidents and near misses that could have so easily have been catastrophic. Thank you, Lord, for your provision. Goodness, health. Health. I mean, how could you forget that overall? Your love, Heavenly Father, all the way. What's that song, All the way my Saviour leads me? What have I to ask beside? Could I doubt his tender mercies, who through life has been my guide? Heavenly peace, divinest comfort, which by grace with us abide. For I know whatever befalls me, Jesus doeth all things well. Thank you, Heavenly Father.
Well, that leads me to the obvious, doesn't it? The insight into John's Gospel and devotion early on to the words in red, if I was going to get anywhere, understanding any value in this religion, it was going to be here. And the feeling from the beginning that I had a relationship with Jesus that probably the church didn't have. And that encouragement that I could understand what they did not understand. Suppose because I was truth-seeking still. The philosopher, the humanist, you know, studying Plato. And without knowing it, of course, I mean, a stu- what, what is a 20th century student who has nothing to do with classics in, in his school, when he goes to tech college, chooses to read Plato. I mean, really? And what did that turn out to be? The foundation of the mystery cults. And yet, hardly a word about it did I notice anything about religion in Plato? Hardly at all. I mean, it didn't cross my mind that this was a religious person. I, I suspect if I read it again, I'd just be amazed I didn't see it in the first place. But do you see, preparing me for understanding truly who Jesus was, And that I've only come to realise in the last, I don't know, certainly the last decade, you know. That, if you like the ancient wisdom, and I mean pre-Egypt, I mean green Sahara, I think it comes from. the rational discourse, the Greek mind. What did they contribute to world development? Mystery cults. Christianity being one of them. Okay, a rather perverse one that decides on literalism, but I mean, same story. But you know, this growing devotion to Jesus but then you have to hear his words and his devotion is to God not to himself right God it is and then more recently realizing of course it's in the name and when you read John 17 you realize it is the name if you get the relationship with God right, that he's your dad, wonderful, all-powerful, all-loving, your dad, you're his child. When you start to view reality from that point of view, wow, <laughs> you're away. You're on your way to heaven. This is life eternal to know thee, the only true God. And Jesus Christ in their sent. So, I haven't been narrow. I have continuously been open to every denomination you can think of and every religion that came my way, including even formally studying, you know, religious studies. At a sort of, you know, postgraduate diploma type level and and so on, which was obviously child's play compared to what I'd already studied, but that didn't matter, it was fun. I did a postgrad in philosophy as well, just for fun, and that was good. Very often I was doing papers on political studies, because political economy has always been close to me. I forgot to mention I became an economist, didn't I? 
oh, very rational we are, economists, very worldly wise, or we don't, we are none of this um, fairy stuff here. <laughs> and I was the best. I have no humility. I know I was the best. And you know, it was incredibly aided by becoming a Christian at the time. I'd go to our staff seminars and uh, instead of it being one of those, you know, guarded performances going on there, I would offer genuine advice and, or suggestions and concepts and questions and encouragement and get the place talking. And you could turn a, a starchy seminar, you know, research seminars, into something really worthwhile for everybody. And I knew it was me doing it in large measure. I mean, they soon caught on, don't get me wrong. But just a different attitude could transform the department. We were a lovely department. I don't mean they were Christian or anything like that. But, ah, oh, it was good. Thank you, Dad. I so enjoyed being an economist, academic, lecturer. But I enjoyed teaching. Teaching was wonderful. Just love teaching. Love the kids. Love the staff, too the most amazing principals and head teachers too. Incredibly helpful at the right time. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Love you. Thank you, Dad. Well, I'm still going to add something. The importance of Mum. I know I mentioned her at the start, but well, love you, Mum. Love you, Mum. Thank you, Dad. Which reminds me, just remembered my three kids. <laughs> Absolutely bless them. I had them individually. They've all been only children, one by each wife. Absolutely super they've been. The best. Bless all three of you. Love you. Love you to bits. Who have I missed? All those that loved me that I didn't know about. Lord bless you and keep you. And cause his face to shine upon you. Now and forevermore. Thank you, Dad.